everybody. Welcome to Sawbox Seminars and Admin Chat present PowerPoint Razzle Dazzle. I'm so glad you could join me today. So in today's world, we're doing an awful lot of presentations online and animation can be a big help here to sit in place of that live presenter. And we'll talk about what works and what doesn't. We're going to talk about animating bullet points as a way to keep the screen moving, and we're going to take a look at a couple of different ways to do that. We're also going to look at getting smart art and charts on the slide and then how to animate those, again, to explain content, but also to keep things moving. We're going to have a look at 3D models and a couple of different ways to get an animation effect on those using regular animation and morph transition. And then we're going to talk a little bit about using screen recordings. Off we go. All right. So in the old days, or maybe some of you are back in the office, but we used to do presentations in front of the room. And when you had presentations in front of the room, you had the presenters gestures and their facial expressions to kind of add to the information. And in fact, the presenters gestures and facial expressions are as important as the information on the screen because it can emphasize and explain certain points. But here we are, and in an online world, yes, you can still occasionally see the presenter's face, but oftentimes it's tucked up there in a corner and the slide is on the screen. And so while you still see their facial expressions and maybe you see their shoulders going up and down while they're gesturing, even though the camera isn't picking it up, you're really not getting the full effect of having that presenter in front of the room. You also have the struggle of less than engaging content. So when you have a lot of text on the screen, it's kind of hard to figure out what point the presenter is on. And so we're going to talk about bullet point animation that can help. And of course, you should never have that much text on the screen. And then we're going to talk about things like technical details. This is where we get into smart art and info diagrams of all sorts and charts and graphs. And you may have spent a good deal of time putting that diagram together and you understand it completely, but when you just put it on the screen like that, not everybody is going to be with you on that. They weren't on the journey to create it, so it just looks like a lot of lines and shapes. All right, let's talk first about simple entrance animation. This is just bringing up a bullet point at a time on the screen, and you've just seen the three most often used, that being fade in, fly in, and float in. Now, when should you animate bullets? Because you shouldn't always do it, but when you want to talk about one topic at a time and keep that previous topic on the screen, that's when you want to use simple entrance animation. And it's as easy as selecting the bullet points and applying the animation. So I'm going to come over here to my working copy of this presentation. There we go. So I can show you kind of what that would look like. I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this slide. I'm going to get rid of the existing animation on the duplication. By the way, I'm going to show you how to do that roadmap here shortly. And we're just going to do some simple animation on these bullet points. My go-to is float in, but again, fly in or fade are just fine. Uh, let's do fly in. So we can do fly in, and that's how the bullets are going to come on the screen. Now, you see it gave it numbers 1 through 6 here. Those correspond to the order in which the animation is going to appear when you click. And that is what that means. That's the trigger or what's going to start the animation. So what that will look like in real life here, I'm just going to present this one slide. And that would just look like this. So we can talk about this topic, and then we can talk about this topic, and then this one, and then this one. I'm not going to go through the whole list, but you get it. So that's basic, simple entrance animation. Don't animate every bullet on every slide all throughout the presentation in the same way. Your audience will tune out to what that animation really means. So you've got to vary it, especially online. Now here's another way to talk about one topic at a time and really highlight or emphasize a particular point. So here are the steps. We're going to animate the bullets with whatever entrance animation you want to use. 
Then we're going to either add animation from the add animation button and either use an exit animation or a color change. In my example, I'm using a color change and that's an emphasis animation. So we're going to add that. And as each new bullet pops up, you can see what's happening. The ones, the other ones previous are grayed out. The second set of animation that you just added, you're going to change that trigger to start with previous. And there's a reason for that. So initially it won't look very interesting. But when you do that, you'll reveal the animation pane and then reorder the animation steps so that as one comes in, as the next one comes in, that previous one grays out. And then as the next one comes in, the one previous to that grays out or changes color and whatever you're using for your background. You want to choose something subtle so it's still visible up there, but not pulling focus, if you will, the way rearranged so that as a new bullet comes in, the other exits or changes color. That one is pulling focus right now. All right, so that's what that will look like. And then, of course, if you want to summarize, I just duplicated that slide and had all those bullets come in, come in again. So what that looks like on the screen is this. So I first did my animation of my bullet points, and I think I used float in. Then I did my color change, and at first, all the entrance was up here, and all the color change was down here. And then I simply moved them up in the right order. And you can use these arrows here, or you can click and drag them. I find that using these arrows is a little less frustrating because sometimes click and drag doesn't do what you expect it to do. You can also animate text and objects. So you remember my roadmap screen. So the way that looked, first we got the roadmap on there. And believe it or not, that was just a simple line. So I went to Insert Shapes, and I chose that squiggly line right there. And I just drew a squiggly line that was more or less the size I needed. Then I went to Format Shape, where I could change it to 48 points. Now you can change it to whatever you want, but 48 gave me a nice road size. And then I'm going to change it to a road color. I'm going to use Control D to duplicate the shape. You can do Copy Paste change the weight of that one to six, which is going to be our lines when we make them dashes. Now, right now, these would disappear, so I'm going to change the outline color to white and then drag it back on top of my road, and that was how I created the road. After that, I just inserted um, a bunch of circles and change the, uh, change the uh, style of it to look a little bit raised. So I just pulled one of these off of here. And you can apply whatever effects you want. And then again, Control D on this shape and just move them along the road. Now that got it on there. Let's finish that up. So now we have five uh, points here. So if we would have five bullets to go with it. Now I want to apply the animation to these, so I'm just going to select them all, and I use Fade In. So you're going to go to Animations. Remember, the first time you can add it from the gallery, but the second time you have to go to Add Animation. And I just did it with Fade. So right now, it looks like this. But when you rearrange the animation to get it to look like it's supposed to, it looks like this. So all I did was mark some of those, uh, start with previous, and then I started using my arrow keys up here to move them up so that as animation in an online meaning world came up, the first dot came up. Then as bullet animation came up, the next oval came in, that would be this guy, but at the same time, that first one faded out. And that's how I got my roadmap to work. So we just looked at some ba some different types of bullet animation. Basic bullet animation, which is just bringing one topic in at a time. Uh, we used kind of an isolated bullet technique so we could have one pulling focus. And you can either change color or you can have the previous bullet leave the slide. That's up to you how you want to do that. But I had mine changing color so it was pulling focus. And in this last type of bullet point am animation, we actually combined 
text bullets with objects. The magic happens over here in the animation pane. All right, let's talk about animating smart art. So if you haven't worked with SmartArt yet, we're going to set up some basic SmartArt and show you how to get this kind of effect so that one piece of your info diagram is getting on the screen at a time. So one of the ways in which we can create SmartArt is to right click a set of bullets, convert it to SmartArt, we animate the entire diagram, and then by using the effect options, we can get it to come in in a particular way, one by one, as opposed to the entire diagram at the same time. And then if you want to get fancier than that, you can convert it to shapes. So again, I'm going to come over here to my working copy. There we go. Let's come and use these same steps to get our uh, process diagram, which is going to look like that. So the first thing I did, I'm going to duplicate this slide and I'm going to get rid of my sub bullets because we can just talk about those. Now that I have my bullets on the slide that I want to use in my diagram, I can do a right click, convert to SmartArt, and from more SmartArt graphics, I'm going to go to Process. And I like this one when I'm talking about steps. And click OK. And that's what it's done so far. Now I can apply different styles, I can use my color palette from my theme uh, to work on here. Now, let's talk about animating. If this is useful, I'm going to get rid of this little diagram here for right now. This is useful, but what if I want to talk about each of these steps individually? Well, let me animate the smart art. I'm going to use a uh, float in, and I'm going to have it float in from the top. So float down, there's your effect options. The first effect options. Now because I want these to come in one at a time, I'm going to choose the effect option one by one. Now you see it's dropping down each step one at a time. And that would let me explain a complex process, but still give the idea that this is a process and it goes from one step to the next. Now if you really want to get fancy, so for example if I want the shapes and the arrows to come in separately, what I need to do here on my SmartArt design, I'm all the way here on the right, I'm going to convert this to shapes. Now, all of the animation I put in is now gone, so we're going to have to redo that. But the first thing I'm going to have to do, since it's not smart anymore, is I'm going to have to ungroup it. So now all the shapes are separate. Now I can apply my animation again, my float in animation, and these are all here one at a time. So if I set these up to right now, one click would bring them all in, but I actually want them all to start on click because I want to bring each shape in at a time. Well, let's see what that looks like so far. So it's bringing in the arrow and then the shape, and that's not what I want. So the first thing I'm going to do is I do want these to drop down. So I'm going to do Effect Options, Float Down. That's the first change I'm going to make. And then I need to do a little rearranging over here. So I don't want the arrow coming in first. I want it coming in after the shape. So I'm going to go to each one of these and move the arrow down. Okay, so we need to go back to where the arrow, the third arrow, one, two, this one has to come down. And then this one has to go down. And we should be okay. Let's see what we got. So I'm going to fire up that slide. By the way, I'm doing Shift F5 to launch from the current slide. So we're going to talk about this step. And then we're going to go to this step. And then we're going to go to this step. So that lets me have that arrow give me kind of a segue between the steps, okay? So you can only do this, this kind of tight animation, each little piece, if you convert the SmartArt to shapes. So first you're going to right-click in the bullet text and choose Convert to SmartArt. Then you're going to animate the whole diagram. You're going to choose the effect option you want. I chose Float In. 
and then I change that effect option to float down and then one object at a time. The second time I converted this, I said convert it to shapes. All of the animation disappeared. I had to add it all back. And in this case, I had to juggle around the script a bit to get the arrows showing up in the right sequence. Now, when you convert it to shapes, you will need to ungroup it before you start animating. It just comes in as one big chunk first. Okay, now if you've never done smart art before, let me just put a new slide in here. All right, if you've never done smart art before, you can just go to the insert tab, choose the smart art button, or you can use this one if you have that icon showing up in your placeholder. If you're creating it from scratch, you can just choose the kind of smart art that you want. I'll choose this process arrow. What's going to happen is you're going to get your diagram here, but you're going to see this little type your text here box on the left. Now, if you don't see it because it had been previously closed, you're looking for that little arrow right there. And I'm just going to type in step one, step two, and step three. So that's just a basic, uh, basic smart art, but you can choose a diagram and then put in your text. You don't have to go from bullets. You can choose whatever color schemes you kind of like for it. Um, before I go to print, by the way, I usually change it to this on the copy that I'm printing because I don't know what kind of a printer or how much ink somebody has. So I try not to use all their color cartridges. All right, let's talk about charts. So if you put something like this up on the screen, I don't care whether you're in front of people or whether you're on an online meeting, I guarantee you they're craning their heads forward and they're squinting at this thing, trying to figure out what it says. So one of the ways in which we can make charts easier to understand is by animating them. So once you have your chart from Excel on your um, PowerPoint slide, you can animate it so it looks like this. So you're talking about one series at a time, and then I'm putting in that trend line. Or maybe you're talking about one category at a time, and that trend line builds as you add each category. Maybe you can even add elements that make it easier, like putting in a flow arrow like that so that you can point to an object. So how did we do all that? Let me come over to my practice presentation and I'll insert a chart. You can obviously copy and paste this from Excel. Just be aware when you copy and paste it from Excel, you can use anything except the picture option. Don't just paste a picture because you can't animate the individual elements of a chart from a picture. All right, so we're going to insert chart, and we can just use a basic um, chart like that. And we can close this. All right, so I'm going to add a trend line in here. Add trend line, and we can make it a logarithmic trend line. Uh, that's fine. That'll do. Okay, so we have a little trend line in here, and that's another object. By the way, chart things are all basically just objects, so you can see it's selected. I can format that line differently. Let's see if it makes me get, allows me to give it a, a bigger weight. So I now made those dots easier to see. Okay, now we have the chart the way we want it. Let's animate it. So we're going to click on animations, and maybe we'll try uh, float in. So it all just floats in together, which isn't terribly useful. But now I can go to Effect Options and say by series. Or by element in a series. or you can use by element in a category. Now, one thing I like to do is I like that chart background to appear uh, as the slide comes up. So if I expand my animation off out here, all I'm gonna do is delete 
that first one, I just hit my delete key, so that when the animation comes on, that chart background is already there and then the elements themselves can be animated. Now that we've done that, let's talk about adding that arrow. And guys, all it really is is drawing the shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw an arrow shape here, a down block arrow, and let's say this is the one I wanna emphasize. Move it over there and maybe we wanna make that yellow. Maybe we want to make it real fancy and put in a glow in there, make it a purple glow. There we go. And then we're going to animate this arrow to come in. Let's have that one fly in from the top. So that one appears down here. I can either have it appear after the previous one comes in, or I can leave that also on a click. So right now, the chart background is there. All of my elements come in. Kind of speed things along here. So you can see the trend line is going to come in with that second um, series. There we go. And then the arrow follows. And if that's what we want to talk about, because that was our biggest sales month or something, we can highlight that by just adding an additional object on the screen. Now, the steps I just did are in here, select the whole chart, select the animation, work with your effect options so it's coming on the screen as you would like to explain it, and then add things that help, like those little drop-down arrows that point to a particular series. That way, you're not just bringing this whole big confusing chart onto the screen. You're actually explaining how it was built. And then when they're looking at the whole chart, it makes some sense. Plus, things are moving on the screen. And when you're presenting, as I am today, where you don't see my face, it's good to have things moving on the screen. So 3D Models is a relatively new feature. We've been talking about it for a couple of years, but it's one of the newer features of PowerPoint. And it's there on the Insert tab, and it says 3D Models. Let's take a look at what's available here. So on the Insert tab, if you click on the 3D Models button and say Stock 3D Models, so this is like clip art but 3D, you can see there's a lot of categories of things. Now if you know me, you know what I animated. It just flew by the screen. <laughs> So what I animated, of course, was a flamingo. So I'm going to show you how I built this, but this is the animation that I did with the 3D object, and it's a lot easier than you think. So let me press escape here. So I'll delete my flamingo from this one and show you how I got him on there. So I went to insert, 3D models, stock 3D models, and I went down to summer, I believe, was the category. Yep, you know why that caught my eye, right? And scroll down here and found my pink flamingo. So now when you insert a 3D object on the screen, it may take a second, so give it some time. It comes on in whatever its default orientation is. Now you've got some 3D model views that allow you to change how you're gonna see that, okay? So I wanted to start here, and I wanna actually put him on the water. And you know, I kinda of wanna tilt him a little so he's actually on the water. Um, then you can do animation effects. So what I did is I went to the animation pane now automatically you will see another set of animations you can use with 3D objects. So the first thing I had him do was spin around and that is the turntable animation. So that's what that looks like. And he looks like he's just really kind of turning around really slowly there. So on the animation pane, it says duration 20 seconds. So on the animation pane, you can go into effect options and you can go into timing and you can change it. You can use a preset or you can type in the number of seconds. Let's see what two seconds looks like. He's really moving now. And then I want him to leave. So after that animation, same rule, first time from the gallery, second time from the uh, add animation button. And I'm just gonna have him uh, fly out. So where's my fly out? I'm gonna have him fly out. 
but I'm actually going to change the effect options and have them fly out to the right. And I'm going to let this animation happen after the previous one. So what we get is, and I'm going to take the animation off my background picture for this example because we don't need it. So he spins around and then he leaves. <laughs> so um, that's a 3D animation working with 3D objects. Let's talk a little bit about that before we get carried away. Should you be animating flamingos? <laughs> okay, probably not. Um, but consider the value of snapping attendees out of a trance. So if you've presented a lot of uh, very deep and bullet point written data, you might want to put something fun or different on the screen just to catch their attention. Or if you want to emphasize something funny or lighthearted. Now there are business type diagrams and information type diagrams that are 3D models. I'm going to show you one of those. But don't discount using something a little bit fun, especially if there's not a speaker on the screen, to kind of snap them out. 3D objects, you kind of have to play with them. There's a whole bunch of them, and you can play with the animation and how to get them on and off the screen and what they can do on the screen. It's really kind of fun. I know a lot of you are now going to leave. You're not even going to wait for the end of this presentation, and you're going to go away and play with 3D models. But hang in there with me just a few more minutes. I want to talk about 3D models and the morph transition. The morph transition is also relatively new. And what that allows you to do is take a 3D object like this globe, and as you advance the slide, it spins to wherever you want it to land. Um, so you can do this uh, morph transition with regular text and shapes. So this is that uh, 3D globe just kind of spinning there on the slide. But if I want to talk about our offices in North America, and then I want to talk about our offices in South America and our plants over in Africa and our plants in Europe. This was kind of a nice way to do that. Now I'm going to press escape here so you can kind of see what this is. This is four separate slides. This is why I say you can't really use this deck to create your uh, handouts. What I would do is create one that maybe has just the bullet points of the office names on it and maybe a globe there for a piece of art. But on the screen, you're going to use four slides to do this. So let me build this again. So on the first slide, I did insert. I went to 3D models, stock, and I just typed in globe here. And there's various kinds, and these change all the time. So, you know, head back here from time to time to see if they've added anything. And I'll add my globe. All right, I'm going to make it a little bigger size. So you can change the size of these things, it's just the same as you would with any other type of picture. I'm going to roll it around to where I want to start, which for me, let's do North America. So that's where I want to start. And I'm going to type up here, North America. America. Now I'm going to duplicate this slide. I just did control D here. I'm going to change this to south and I'm going to use my little 3D model turntable turn uh, tool here and roll it to South America. Then I'm going to duplicate this one. So you want to make sure you do it in the sequence you're going to put them in there. So let's put in Africa And I'm going to click it and roll it around to the African continent. There we go. Now I'm going to duplicate it again one last time and type in Europe. And I will roll this up to Europe. Okay, we're almost done. So the next thing we're going to do is to select not the first one, but the second, I'm holding down my shift key, third and fourth. And in the tr on the transitions tab, I'm going to find something called morph. Now I'm going to do my little shift F5 to start the presentation from here. 
and show you that when I navigate to the next one, it changes the title and it rolls the globe. And this is done with morph transition. You can use it with simple objects as well. So this is what this one did. On one, I typed, you can also use just simple objects and a big purple circle. I duplicated it and then made that object smaller and moved it a little bit and then made it even smaller, duplicated that one and made it even smaller on the next one. And then again on the fourth one. So this is four slides to which morph transition has been applied. You can get really creative with morph transition, so that can be a lot of fun. Okay, so let's talk about screen recordings. One last thing. So we're gonna talk about screen recordings. So if you wanna show somebody how something works on a screen, you can actually do that screen capture right here in Outlook. I'm gonna come out here to execsectech.com and it's gonna come up here with the sign up for the execsec tech newsletter. So if I wanna record something from here, I can go ahead and say insert, screen recording, this is from the media button, screen recording. It's gonna want me first to select an area. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this entire screen. And I'm not gonna record audio, but I am gonna record my screen pointer. After you hit record, hang on this button for just a second. Don't have to leave the click on, but just leave your cursor there for a minute because that will make that top panel disappear. So I'm gonna hit record, hang on that top panel for a second, and then you can see when I moved it off, it disappeared. So if I wanna show somebody, go ahead and uh, register for our newsletter. And also, if you want to talk to Matt, Matt can help you. You can chat in with Matt right here. And please, by all means, check out ExecSec Tech Conference in June. And if you click on Book Now, you'll get the form to put in all of your information. Now I want to stop. I'm going to use Windows Key Shift Q. You can also go to the top of the screen and hit the stop button and that little panel will come down again. And you're like, so where's your screen recording, Melissa? You have to navigate back to PowerPoint to see the screen recording. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually have this take up more of the slide. Move it down here just a little bit. And when I play it, it's gonna actually show you all of the steps that I did. Now, when this is in presentation, that play bar won't be blocking it, but it's talking that you're seeing me scroll, clicking in fields. So if you wanna do a screen capture, this is the way to do it. Now, if you wanna have it in your PowerPoint presentation, the way I wanted this one in there, awesome. And if you don't, if you wanna use this recording someplace else, you can simply do a right click, save media as, and this will save it as an MP4 file to your computer where you can use it in other things. You can upload it to SharePoint, all sorts of things you can do with that screen recording. If you need to make adjustments to maybe some things extra on the front or extra on the back, you can go to the playback tab and you can actually trim the video to start in a different place or to end in a different place. So you can just drag that around and that will change the playtime of the video when you get to that slide. Okay, so speaking of execsectech.com, please go out there and register for your free bi-monthly installment of the Execsec Tech Digest. We just released our first issue in February and we're gonna have our next one coming out in April. I'm really excited about this. I'm so honored to be the editor for this digest and I look forward to hearing from you what you want to see us write about in ExecSec Tech Digest. Also, come out to sawbuckseminars.com and see all the new webinars we've added out there. If you have questions after this session, please go out there and post them to bit.ly, sawsemqafb, that's our Facebook group, and bit.ly, sawsemqali, that's our LinkedIn group. I'm so glad you joined me today. Everybody, have a great day.